Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, welcome to Good Owl Games, and this is September's Monthly Roundup, the video where I talk to you about the changes to my board game collection. <laughs> Hello, 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 and good morning, everybody. Ireland calling. Yes, um, hello. Um, so welcome to the latest monthly roundup video. Um, allow me to say the obligatory, where has the past month gone? Um, and this is the video where I talk about new games I've acquired, um, what I've been playing, and some general chit chat about me and the channel, if you're interested in that. And I put timestamps in the video, so you don't have to listen to the whole thing, but obviously I would love if you did. Um, so yes, yeah, so this month, I'm checking what month it is again, yes, September of course, um, has not been the best for gaming, so this video should be relatively short and shallow. Um, well, we'll see. It's just been a busy month in the real world, and I've not been feeling the best, so fitting board games in, especially big ones when your brain's not with you, not the best idea in the world. But that doesn't mean I didn't get some exciting new acquisitions I'll talk to you about as best as I can. I fully expect most of my brain to fall out of my ear while doing this, but sure, we'll, we'll give it a try. This is the fun video, right? It doesn't need to be entirely factual, I hope. Um, okay, so we're going to jump right into the first acquisition of the month. It's hard to remember what order everything came in, so we're just going to fake this. So we're going to go with Bitoku, um, mostly because I've most recently played it and I will remember it the best. And I spoke about this last month. I've been trying to get a hold of a copy of Bitoku for some time and finally, finally managed it. And the reason I picked this one up um, is because I saw it set up on in, other, in photographs online and it was so elaborate and pretty, I was immediately intrigued. And what Botoku is about is that you are forest spirits and you're trying to become the next great forest spirit, if I'm correct. Um, and you're doing this by do, doing different things in the wood um, that will kind of help get you closer to this goal. Okay, it's very vague, I know. Um, it's, much, it's got much better kind of uh, descriptions of it than I'm imagining. But you know when you play a game for the first time and you're so focused on what you're doing that the theme part mostly goes out the window because you're like, where does this go? What does this do? Uh, and what Potoku is about is, is a, not quite, I suppose maybe a hand management, I guess, and dice management game. And it's pretty interesting, actually. It's definitely a lot. I found it a lot now to play, but that's because it's the first time you play something. There are a lot of symbols, um, so much so that they give you a nice booklet with all the symbols, um, and I always really appreciate that, so awesome. And kind of what you do on your turn is you play a card, um, you can play a card from your hand. You're able to play three in total. And those will kind of unlock your dice um, so that you can use them in other places. Um, and the kind of things you can do are you can like make there are buildings to be made to give you resources um, you also need resources to make your buildings uh, um, there's a big portion in the middle that is the river and so on one side of that is a place where you can place your dice and activate buildings or get bonuses but then you can move your dice across the river and it makes the number on it one smaller and it allows you to engage with these kind of bigger better cards that you can buy and put in your deck or you can add to like a little path for your meeple to run along there are some fantastic meeples in this by the way um it's beautiful it's very coloredy um very kind of exciting and i can't remember how many turns you play for but mostly there are like there's a track across the top of the board as well um where you are going to different shrines um and you have like a pilgrim going that way so there's a couple of these different things going on you can also kind of get bonus tiles that activate um, next to your card so when you play a card you can activate those there's also like a good and a bad spirit you put together um, and then they will do cool things when they meet I know and the biggest spirit's called yokai I had to it took me a while to remember there because I was like the Batoku cards and the yokai cards yeah um, so I'm not sure how much sense any of this is making but what I will tell you is that it's a euro game I consider it to be relatively heavy. I think it'll be easier with more plays. I was still at the phase where I was just trying to figure out, so I need this thing, how do I get this thing? 
and they'd be like oh you need to do this thing and this thing and this thing I'm like okay <laughs> so I was at that kind of point but um I did enjoy the adding other cards to your hand to play those figuring out where your dice were going to go and things like that um I do very much appreciate the fact that there is a two-player only board on one side of the board so um that was awesome much appreciated but overall it's very beautiful it was quite um fun like it's light-hearted despite it being heavy and I'm looking forward to giving it another go I think it was quite I think it was quite nice it was a good experience um did it take a long time to play didn't feel overly long Great Rest and Trail took a long time to play. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed Botoku. Um, have any, has anyone else played it? Have you, have you any tips and tricks you can share with me? Now that I've, I've only got the, the one play in. I'm at the point in the month where it's like, oh, I've got all these new games and I still haven't got around to play them. We better play them all quickly in one day. And then it's hard you know, to remember exactly how, how they all went. I guess that's my own fault for not spreading them out evenly throughout the month. But um, that's that. So yeah, Botoku. Right, second up on my agenda, um, I find mostly laughable. And this is Great Western Trail 2nd Edition. Take note of the 2nd Edition, which means tiny hats for your meeples. Um, a long time ago, like literally when I started the channel, I think, um, I got a Great Western Trail because, um, you know, it was kind of the, the big deal at the time. Also, it was uh, very reasonably priced, if I remember correctly. And Great Western Trail is a game about rounding up cattle and I think putting them on a train <laughs> this is really vague um yet again but I think that's what that is roughly what it's about because the game is made of a board that you traverse around it's got buildings and things like that and on your journey you'll buy cows you'll sell cows and cows are important because cows mean money and you need money to move your train to get all the way to like from Kansas City all the way to like New York and maybe even further um and the original Great Western Trail, while I thought it was good, I found it quite fiddly, I think, at the time. And we weren't really pulling it out to play, so we traded it away. And then the second edition came out, where they got rid of the racism and added in meeple hats and coloured meeples as well. They're meeples of colour, which I thought was really exciting. Um, and so, <laughs> and also it was pretty cheap for what it is. So we were like, go on, we'll give Great Western Trail another go. So what's the differences between the new and the old one, I hear you ask? It's been a long time since I played the old one, but I can tell you the following. There are now recess boards. There is an organizer. There are hats for your meeples, different color meeples. Um, they tidied up a lot of things. Like there's now bags for the tokens because there are um, kind of engineers and train drivers and all those kind of things you can pick up. And they used to just be stacks of tokens. Now you have bags which is nice um, and things like that. But yeah, it's just kind of fancied up. And now there are bandits instead of Indians. Always good. And it'll, um, so, you know, there's been a couple of those quality of, not quality of life changes, just changes, I suppose. But the game is still the same. Um, I think you get an extra expansion um, in it as well, but I haven't played with it yet. And I sat down to play it maybe last week. Um, must have been the longest game we've ever played because... The thing with Great Western Trail is that there are technically a set number of turns and every time anybody completes this kind of lap and moves their train, you move your train at the end of your lap, um, it kind of moves the marker further down. So my husband was racing around moving the markers, but I was taking my time going through each route. So you can really make the game as long or as short as you like. Um, so a two and a half hour game of uh, Great Western Trail was had. Um, but I had, a, I had a lot of fun. I like collecting cows. Who knew? Um, and I kind of enjoy. I kind of enjoyed it. So yeah, it felt. It felt. It felt good to kind of come back to it. Um, and also, mostly we remembered how to play it, which is a, a nice thought as well. I always think that's the sign of a really good game if you need very little to remind you how to play it. Um, I always think that's well. So that that's great. Western Trail Second Edition. I quite. Uh, I quite like that. It was very pleasant. I'm already thinking about the things I would do next time to be better than the first time. Um, and I think that also says something important as well, doesn't it? So yes, that's Great Western Trail. Um, right, and then, and then, the next thing that showed up isn't so much a game, but it's like a component. So we actually got the deluxe components for Imperial Spells and Steam from Level 99 Games. And this is a train game. It's one I like quite a bit. Um, but I normally, I pretty much never get deluxe anything. Although I think level 99 games is teaching me I probably should because the, there are some games I think where it doesn't matter if you've the deluxe or not. And then there are some where it makes a really big difference. 
Um, and I think this is one of those cases. So Imperial Spells and Steam, for those of you who don't know, um, is a game where you run a train line. It's a fantasy train line. You're a fantasy character. You have your own train board that sits in front of you and then there is a board and it's got all kinds of different types of resources out on it and a number of cities. And what you're trying to do is connect your trains via the resources so they end up at the cities so that they can deliver the stuff. What happens on the turn is that you have your carriage train board and it's a number of carriages and you can put carriages in it and you, you move yourself along your train board to activate particular abilities or allow you to go to particular terrain types to gather those types because it's fantasy, right? So you can go to the red is the fire part um, and things like that. So you're using your train to manipulate what you can do out on the board. The best part about the train is it's technically a roundel. So when you get to the end, something happens and then you come back and you start all over again. So you're running little laps, um, which is really fun. The problem we had with this game was how fiddly it is because those resources were tiny little cardboard discs and you'd have to lay out like 30 or 40 of them on the board at the very beginning of the game, which is very unappealing. But also it could be hard sometimes to tell which one was which because they were very, very teeny. And so um, when the opportunity arose, we um, backed um, the uh, deluxe components. Um, so now like the oil is in little oil barrels and things like that. So I haven't had a chance to pull out the train game yet because it comes in a very, very big box and I might have messed up everything inside of it by taking a photograph of it on its side. So I'm feeling everything fell out and now no one wants to open the box. That might be my fault. Um, but I'm looking forward to giving it a go and I can't imagine a, a way in which those little resources would not enhance everything. Um, there are also, I seem to be fancier player boards as well in it. I think there's some other stuff. There was like an art book. There was all, all sorts of things. Um, that's the fun with Level 99 games. You buy one of their products, you're really into all of their products and you get loads of things whenever for all of the games when you buy something. Um, so yeah, so I think that's been um, super nice. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying that out. So yeah, that was the other kind of purchase, even though that purchase was many moons ago. It only arrived this month. All right. Um, okay, so those are the three purchases. Um, I have another one in queue, but you'll have to wait like next month to hear about that. But I did have three review copies arrive. Um, so this is really exciting because now I'm going to be busy and you'll have more new games to hear about. So I'm going to start with the first one because I just filmed the review for it and this is Delta and this is from Game Brewer Games. Um, and well, <laughs> where, will I, where will I start? Okay, so Delta is a game that is an exploration game. Um, it's basically based around this idea that there is a scientist who went missing 150 years ago and now you're going to kind of follow in their footsteps and try and do research kind of yourself. Um, so it's kind of discovery meets steampunk and what it really is is kind of an action selection game where you have a handful of cards with characters and these characters have um, a bunch of symbols that will mean different things depending on what what part of the board you play them on. So they kind of interact with each of the zones differently. Um, the really cool part is not only do you have to worry about, you know, what cards you play, um, there are unique discard piles based on each zone of cards that your cards go back into. And when you run out of cards, you get to pick them up out of your discard pile. You get to choose which pile you want back. So you're perpetually watching your cards as you kind of engage with these different parts of the board. So you can go exploring, you can find animals, you can um, buy kind of bonus tiles and end game scoring things. So that it's, it's, that, it's that kind of game. Um, I do think it's interesting. I think the cards are kind of cool. I wish the track parts were kind of better connected -y, but that's just, I suppose, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just not a fan of straight of track games anymore. I think Simone Luciani destroyed me um, for those reasons. But um, yeah, I think it's a well-polished game. I'll have a full review coming soon because it's coming to Kickstarter soon. Um, I'll put the date on the bottom because there's um, no point in me guessing and getting it incorrect. Um, so you might want to keep your eyes peeled for that if that sounds like something fun for you. Um, yeah. And Game Brewer always make kind of very nice and polished games, to be fair. Right, so then second on the list is World Stitchers. So this is also coming to Kickstarter in about a month's time. I think it's coming in October. No, that's October, so maybe November. I'll put the date down, put the date down, yes. Don't even try, Nelly. Um, so World Stitchers, um, and this is a tile laying game. And 
you know what, there's been a lot of tie lane games, right? Um, so I was like, how is this going to do anything different? Um, so the first thing is the shape of the tiles are weird. Allow me to demonstrate with a photo. I, I can't, I looked up the word for this at one point, but, but I can't. So it's like a square with triangles on the side, like that. Yeah, okay. And what's actually supposed to be happening here is that you have like a little guardian or a kind of a god of sort um, who is stitching parts of the world together and um, stitching different terrain types. So it rep you get your own little representative token. There is an owl, I had to play with the owl. And what happens is on your turn, you can play a tile and connect up the different terrain types. And when you do, those terrain types gain like little energy beads, right? And then you're allowed to move. Um, but you can only move as far as you have t matching terrain tiles in your hand. So prepare, prepare, so imagine this for a moment with me. So let's say I have um, three water and grass tiles in my hand. Well, that means I could move three grass tiles or three water tiles on the board. Um, and the way to get more of those tiles to let you move more is to skip basically placing the tile at the start of the turn and making more energy and you need to buy those costs energy so it's kind of this interesting um thing where i can make loads of stuff but then i need the stuff to buy the stuff uh, <laughs> it feels like you know you're just getting going and then you're like oh no i have to like spend stuff for this um i was very surprised by this i didn't I didn't think it was going to be anything super special, but this is a whole kind of other way of doing tile length that I really enjoyed. And the shape of these tiles drove me mad, not gonna lie. I was like, is this the same size as this? Can this connect to this? Um, so it added some other dimension to the game that I hadn't anticipated. And it was quick to play as well. It was, you know what, it was kind of refreshing to be honest. Um, so I need to play a few more games of that and then there'll be a review for that coming as well. Um, so yeah, we're all busy, busy around here. And then the final thing on my agenda um, that blew my socks off um, when I played it at the weekend, and this is Village Rails, and this is from Osprey Games. So, another train game? Like, what is that? I was like, another toilet game? Ugh, another train game? Ugh. But um, yeah, apparently there are still ways to be inventive in board games. And so what Village Rails is about is, it's first of all, it's tiny. I don't know if you can see it behind me, it's up there. It's tiny box and inside is tiny cards. <laughs> but what you have is you basically are trying to connect different um, places on your board with these car with these cards, which are train tracks. And they'll have kind of um, different symbols and things on them that you're going to want to connect up, right? So what you start is you have two pieces of card, like an L shape, and then you fill in the cards. So you're going to be able to play 12 cards total. Um, that's the whole game. And you want to connect everything up kind of uh, as you wish. So to buy a card, you start at the start of the round and you have to like take a card from the tile. You don't have a hand, like you take one from the row. And, and much like Century Spice Road, the further up you go, the more money you have to leave behind. But the only way to make money is by completing railroad tracks. And you have these little cards that are like, if your railroad has, you know, this many things on it, you can have money. Um, so you kind of need to plan around that. And there are also cards that give you extra bonuses and stuff as well, if you complete a route that says, whatever the case may be, and you have to pay for those as well. So it's this weird thing of managing your money, but also I have to play a track each round um, <laughs> and getting the right cards at the right time. Um, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was great. I was sitting there trying to count everything. I was like, how many corn symbols do I have? Oh, I need this. And then I was like, oh, it's got train stops. So most of it scores during the game, a little bit of it scores afterwards. Um, but trying to like, Keep track of your own scoring while while building things. Um, I found um, to be kind of fun. Um, yeah, I, I just really liked it. I'm looking forward to playing it again. It was very tidy and timely and um, super polished. So yeah, I can heartily recommend Village Rails. That'll also have a review coming soon. I wonder what it's going to say. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's been the new games this month. Um, which one of the review ones are you looking forward to hearing about the most? Because um, they shouldn't be too far away. Um, they're all on timers, so I got stuff to do. And I'd love to hear about what new games you got over the month. Um, yeah, I would definitely want to hear more. So that's the whole buying portion done. So we'll go to what I've been playing, which mostly was the buying portion. Yeah, it kind of was. All right, see you over there. So because it's been a pretty busy month and I've been kind of 
playing the review copies and things like that less than my own games. This is a very small section. Um, I have been playing some Magic the Gathering. There apparently is a, was a new set out, so we've been drafting that. But I already want to talk about Magic here because, you know, I, I don't want to be any sort of drug dealer, really. Um, but for board games, I suppose I'll go with this one because um, I got to show it to somebody new. And I always think that puts a game in a new, you know, window or a new a new way of looking at it um when you sh when you try and show it to somebody else um and this is cartographers um this might be the only roll and write i own or flip and write that i own it probably is um but cartographers has such a mellow attitude about it and it's always something i feel like um anybody could enjoy so i like showing it off when i get the chance um so cartographers is a game in which you are making a map and you're doing this by filling in Tetris pieces basically onto your little map and you kind of you color it in or you pencil it in or you there's a couple of loads of different ways to put these things in and by kind of surrounding certain features or completing certain objectives um so they'll be like you know what's the biggest square you can make or touching sides with different colors you know what i mean they'll have those kind of spe specificities for you to follow um and at the start of the round you they f you flip over a card and whatever symbols and shape it is you have to fit it down on your board um so cartographers is this is just like it's fun and easy it's, te it's you as tetris um but i just there's something really nice about it um and i normally hate this kind of stuff but it's the it's the only excuse I have for my bucket of crayons um, and it's just really enjoyable. So showing this to somebody else um, actually was pretty easy because it's very visual, right? So you're like, this car right here, you see this? Put that down there, make that fit. Um, I still have the problem of spatial relations. I have to steal the card and like twist it around and stuff so I can figure out what way around to put it because I, I can't imagine it in my brain I just get a little caught up like that sometimes um, but I do love cartographers and our, our new our new friend figured out how to play it fairly handily because it is quite straightforward and it's kind of fun colouring stuff in um, the thing I suppose here is that there are both symbols and colours so if you have a, an issue with colour blindness you know you can there are other ways for the cars to be marked which I think is a nice is a nice thought um, but overall, yeah, just really relaxing and chill. And you know what? I thought I would kind of be like, I'm done with this, you know, after a bit. Because once you've done a little bit of colouring, you've done some more colouring. Do you really need to do any more? And it's like, yeah, kind of. It's just super chill to sit down and play. Um, so that's kind of like the nighttime game around here. Um, and it was nice to have somebody else see it as well. So yeah, so that's Cartographers. I assume some of you have played it. Um, if not, I can heartily recommend for gamers and non-gamers alike because it, yeah, just makes sense. People, people get that kind of thing. Okay, so it's time to do something controversial. I'm just going to hop right over to the end section because pretty much everything I played this month you heard in the first section. So I hope, that, I hope that's enough to keep your thirst quenched. You'll just have to wait till next month when there are more games and things to talk about. Um, but for now, I'm going to jump into the personal bits if you want to come join me there and hear why I had such a busy month. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of ashamed I didn't get more games played. I didn't realize it was so few, but it's not really few, it's just it was the same games again and again. Maybe. But anyway, hello, how are you? You survived another month. Welcome, welcome. Um I'm trying to see what's going on around here. Well obviously there's been a number of review copies, so I'm I'm busy and plan planning and scheming and trying to get as much stuff done as I can before it gets really dark um which is the impending doom is happening i don't know what's happening in the rest of the world but ireland went straight from summer 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 pff, winter we didn't get like any autumn there was no in between i did not get a transition phase so already it's kind of miserable and stuff like that outside um but it's been a busy month um my best friend got married so i went to a wedding um which was super stressful for like a month before and now a month after so that's part of the reason the board games have been so little i've just been kind of on edge and it's very i think i find it very hard to sit down like board games um force you to focus um and i think that you know sometimes when your brain isn't isn't right trying to make it do something like that it just um highlights how bad your brain is you know what i mean i just think it makes it worse sometimes and um, so i'm hoping this will all settle down now this month uh, that's all kind of done and dusted and you know normal service will resume um let's see what else has been happening there's been less trips out um but 
Um, that's mostly weekend problems just because we've been busy. It's just been busy, 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 busy. I have still been going to the cinema. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm keeping a thread on, on cinema on Twitter. Or if you use Letterboxd, um, you can follow me along there. I'm just called Good Owl because there's no games, it's movies. And I've seen some really fun stuff over the past month. Um, let's see, what have we seen? <laughs> All right, so a flyby of what I saw in September. Um, I think Beast was just at the end of the month's transition over. So it was the survival movie with Idris Elba. I was very excited to see this, was super disappointed in it. Yeah, just a lot of it didn't make any sense. You know, one of those movies where you're like, there's no way you would have done that. Mm hmm. There was that. I saw Mr. Malcolm's List, which is kind of like a period drama. Um, you know what? It was it was kind of fun. I kind of enjoyed it, despite it being very kind of predictable and all the rest. Um, it was at least kind of laughable. I, you know, it was fun. like, yeah, it was enjoyable. Would I watch it again? I'm not sure, but I enjoyed it while I was there. What else did we get to see? Uh, I saw E.T. Um, on the big screen. Um, you know what? I didn't remember half of that movie as I thought I did. You know when you watch it with your when you're a kid, and in my mind the movie wasn't two hours long for a start, um, but apparently so. Um, you know what? Only okay, I think on rewatch. I think it was just too much pulling at the heartstrings. You know what I mean? See, can I can I spoil ET? I assume it's too late now. Um, but like, there's a, there's a whole portion where we think ET has died you know, for like a couple of minutes and everyone's like, oh, and everybody's sad and then, oh, I'm alive. I'm like, this was so unnecessary. Thanks, thanks, Steven Spielberg. Because um, I've, I've forgotten all about it. So yeah, stuff like that. I found it a bit just pulling the heartstrings for the sake of it. Um, but I can kind of see why it's a classic-ish. Um, you know, Andrew Barrymore is amazing in that movie. Um, what was next? Oh, yes, that's right. I went and saw, oh my God, 3,000 Years of Longing, another Idris Elba movie, but mostly I went for Tilda Swinton because I always think she, she's super cool. Um, this is kind of a movie about um, basically her finding kind of a genie in a bottle scenario and kind of, you know, you kind of find yourself imagining what would you do if you had three wishes. Um, I think this movie was brilliant up until a particular point. And then I went, no, no, that's just stupid and kind of wrecked it a little bit for me. But it was still kind of fun. Um, so what was the next one? I saw Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan. Yay, I finally got to see Khan on the big screen. And it was glorious, um, just like the, the, the right movie. It was even better in the big screen. So I was like, that's amazing. Gonna love the thing. Oh, man. I went and I saw a movie called Blackbird. Um, and there's a reason for this. Um, so... You may remember a worldwide phenomenon called Riverdance. Yes, and it's, one of its stars was a man named Michael Flatley. Um, and he decided to write, direct and produce his own movie called Blackbird, in which he stars as a kind of a mystery kind of agent who has quit his job. Um, you know, his wife passed and now he'll never work again and then ends up in a situation where he'll have to work again. Um, I'll say one thing for Michael Flatley, he makes everyone else in the movie look great. Um, yeah, it was really flat. And I, I think what's really sad is actually there was a very good concept, I think, for a movie here. This idea of this guy who's, who's, who's given up on his, you know, I don't know, super agent ways. Um, but, you know, has to go back for, for one last job. Like, I could see this being a real movie, um, apart from, like, the rest of it. So that was hilariously bad, but I couldn't help myself. And then I saw a movie as well called Fall. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, you might have seen this around. Basically, Fall is about two girls who decide to climb a ridiculously high tower and then get stuck. <laughs> um, I won't say any more than that about it. Um, this movie surprised me because I thought it was going to be a throwaway, you know, oh, we're trying to spooky movie um, for most of it. But actually, it was a really good movie movie. Yet again, up until a particular point where I'm like... And then you just threw your movie out the window. Um, but yeah, that surprised me for, for most of it because I was expecting it to be absolute rubbish. You'll love me getting value out of my cinema ticket, lads. Um, what else did I see? Oh yeah, that's right. I want to see Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Um, so this is kind of a, it's supposed to be a horror movie with a bunch of kind of rich kids in a, a mansion during a blackout. Um, 
yeah uh, the, the idea really is that they're playing a game and then hilarity ensues or terribleness ensues i didn't feel like it was a terrible movie um i really liked the ending the ending was good i wasn't expecting that so it kind of fit in very nicely with everything else that had been in the movie it kind of recolored the movie in a particular light for me so i really really liked that and then i got to see jaws in 3d this was accidental because it wasn't supposed to be in 3d i just somehow misread that it was 3d until we arrived and i realized we need glasses um i just i love that the my cinema has been bringing back in old movies i find that really really fun because you know obviously i didn't get to see jaws in the cinema um and you know what the 3d version was not half bad i expected it to be absolute crap um but it was good it just made everything kind of close to the screen feel closer give it give it a lot of depth and they didn't really use it much for scare moments or anything like that the movie stood on its own as always and jaws is brilliant um you know so there's that good old jaws i probably should stop talking soon and i also saw see how they run and um, like a murder mystery kind of detective thing it's um yeah um it's got Saoirse Ronan who is an Irish actress who I absolutely love and she is brilliant in this oh my god she's so good I felt like every scene she wasn't in made the movie worse um it's also got Sam Rockwell if you like Sam Rockwell like it was very kind of pleasant fun um kind of light-hearted kind of comedy thing I really really liked it it was very good um I saw Ticket to Paradise why I'm not sure that's got Julia Roberts and George Clooney in it in some sort of romance movie very unoriginal romance movie but you know that's how we go and the last thing I've seen up until today when I have to go see Avatar later um is don't worry darling I saw that on Friday um there's been a lot of talk about this in the news I'm not really sure why um it's a Stepford Wives kind of movie um you know where everything's perfect but a little too perfect um I felt it was like a little long um I did like kind of how it ended but it really kind of dragged it out a bit um but yeah like I didn't I didn't mind it I just I kind of wish it had got to where it was going a little faster I just think it dragged it out a bit but that's not too bad either so I don't think I've spoiled anything in here um if I have yell I feel terrible about that and then yeah so, so today I'm going to see the um going to see Avatar um I've never seen Avatar on, <laughs> and that's entirely on principle because the time when Avatar came out I was waiting on the Avatar The Last Airbender movie and I thought this was it because I didn't don't really watch trailers I just knew the Avatar movie was coming out and I was really excited and it turned out this was not the real Avatar movie so I've never watched this one because it wasn't the right Avatar movie now of course the Avatar The Last Air her <laughs> better movie turned out terrible um so um you know maybe i should give avatar a chance but um yes yeah, so it's back in cinemas in 3d i have my glasses from jaws so i'll see that later and i'll report back next month maybe so yeah i've done a lot of cinema in but not much else um but you know what it's been good i supposed to get out of the house and there's been a lot of things in the cinema i am getting value out of my 14.99 a month i'll tell you um no one will stop me um, so yeah, that's kind of everything. The only other thing I'll tell you, and it's a little bit of a secret because I haven't really told anyone else yet, um, is that I think I'm getting a bicycle. It might be here tomorrow. I don't know. I'm not sure I remember well how to cycle, but I'm going to try and cycle to the cinema. So this is the big goal. I don't know if I'll make it that far, but I can start practicing now. So maybe by spring we'll get there. I haven't had a bike in a really long time um and so it's all very scary and it's also you know i don't know stress me out to no end so we'll see how that goes but that's all the excitement in my life tell me about the excitement in yours i love hearing about other people's good news i want to hear your good news this week i don't care how big how small i want to hear it um i want to see that everyone else out in the world is having nice things happen to them so thank you for tuning in um hopefully next month's round, monthly roundup will be slightly superior and less movie orientated but sure you never know um and until next time you know like subscribe all that jazz and i will talk to you then so take care everybody Bye bye